Well, hi there. Greetings, Internet, Facebook Live, King5.com, wherever you might be. Welcome officially, Market Front, Seattle. It's open. It kicks off today. Chris Cashman here, and the ceremonies will officially kick off at about 2 o'clock. But before then, we wanted to take you guys along for a journey because a lot of you are saying, wait a minute, it's open? I didn't know it was open. And some of you, it's okay to admit, maybe didn't even know this was happening. I don't need to wear the sunglasses just yet, but I'll need them in a minute as we take you out front. This is a spectacular, spectacular addition to Pike Place, of course, already a staple in Seattle. This is where you come for the very best food in Seattle, the best shopping, all of that. But now Market Front has the best view, even more shopping. A lot of restaurants are going to be opening underneath. There's a little sneak preview here. We're actually going to get a little tour behind the scenes. Patricia Gray is here, the Pike Place Market Foundation. You have been working hard behind the scenes to kind of help raise the money to make all of this happen. So this has got to be an exciting day. This is a huge day for us. Yeah. Um, our team's really excited, and we're just really proud of how beautiful this place is. This incredible view, it's just, it's a whole new feeling for the market. So for folks who are just catching wind of all of this, as you can see, right across the street, that's Pike Place. We're right here. Pike Place is right there, just directly across the street. Market Front is now open. We're going to take you on the walking tour. Multi-level, there's a bunch of shops and restaurants going in downstairs. A couple of them are already open. Some of them are under uh, progress. But talk about what we're seeing right here, this brand new yeah. vendor space. Yeah, so this is called the new pavilion on the market front. Um, as you can see, we have space for more farmers and artists to set up here every day. Um, it's got retractable glass garage doors, so we still get the great view of Puget Sound. Um, but really, depending on the climate, you know, wind, rain, sunshine, this place is fully functional. And what you can see we're doing really special today is some of our artists are actually doing demonstrations of their work. So right here we have the St Steel Toad Studios, and this is Erica, and she is actually going to be forging her metal wares today. Um, everything from belt buckles and necklaces. She's also doing these little commemorative piggy bank charm um, takeaways. So. Yeah, really cool work you see here. Everything in Pike Place Market is handmade. It's locally made by the artists, and they go through a competitive selection process to be here. So, you know, Pike Place is really the center of handmade in Seattle. Let's go walking down here. We're going to take you guys on the foot tour here because there's a lot of cool stuff happening. They're getting ready to blow some glass right over here. I already walked by and saw a booth with little stuffed kitty toys over here. And if my daughters catch wind, I will never make it out of Market Front without buying them. But as you can see, they're all setting up again at 2 o'clock. We're going to kick off things here on the stage. The mayor is going to be here. We've got some live music, some great bands that are going to be here. But we know a lot of you are, are stuck at work or you're far away and you can't be here. So we want to show you everything. Look at these. This is what I'm talking about right here. Cat balls. <laughs> my daughters like everything cats. There's no way I'm leaving here without buying a couple of these. Well, and you always find something unique in the market. Um, new artists are coming online all the time, so don't think you've seen it all. So let's keep walking this way. As again, people are just getting set up. You can see the band setting up. The seats are starting to fill in. There's been some VIP events happening downstairs. Uh, you and I have already worked together this week. I came out here a little earlier to show off these market charms, which we'll show you guys in a second. It's the first time since the 80s you've been able to offer up naming rights. People might remember the tiles over in the regular market. Right. You come over here and now there's these great little metallic, kind of like the little pig one you just saw, but you can pick the message, you can customize it. They have hung them here. They're going to do some more in the fall. So we're, we're going to show you guys that in a minute. There's some really powerful messages. Some people just putting their names, their family, tributes to uh, loved ones, memoriams. There's some wedding proposals out there. And I don't think the uh, recipients even know they're there yet. That's kind of exciting. That's really exciting. Yeah, I think the charm fence is kind of a whole new experience for people. We hung 6,151 charms in the last two weeks. Um, and we just released the locations of everybody's charms. So we're expecting a couple of thousand charm donors out here today, wow. feverishly searching the fence, um, <laughs> looking for their names and their inscriptions. Let's go out there and rub elbows with some of them here. You're going to go right underneath this. Come right this way. We've given you access. Thank you. Point out our piggy bank hoof prints. So, in addition to yeah. the charm donations, we're standing right now on the bronze hoof print path. So, these were donations of five thousand dollars. So, some of our major donors are in here. We sold about four hundred hoof prints, um, and they lead up to our new mascot of the market front. Her name is Billy the Piggy Bank. Yeah, let's come over here. We want to show you Billy. Come right over this way. Hi, Billy. 
It's starting to get crowded, but this is a great problem, a great problem to have for the grand opening of Market Front. Right over here, amongst the crowd, look at this photo opportunity. This is Billy, and Billy was actually kind of like airlifted in here, right? Billy was a very lonely bronze pig. Take a look. Billy's hiding over here. Great photo opportunity. Yeah, so you know the saying pigs fly? Well, pigs do fly at Pike Place Market. And this big bronze girl, she literally made her way down Western Avenue, and then the construction crane plucked her up from the sidewalk. She had some beautiful wings on. She did a big 360 uh, fly around the market, and then she landed right here on the market front. Um, as you can see from her shiny ears and her shiny nose, that shows how much love and attention she's getting. So the shinier she gets, that means the more love people are giving her. And in addition to touching her, you might notice there's a coin slot on her back. She is actually a piggy bank. And all of the proceeds uh, support the growing community of services and low-income housing that we have here in the market. And that's an important twist to all of this. Uh, it's more than just a, a, a great place to show off all that is Seattle. Take a look at this view, as mentioned. Other than a rooftop deck, this is unquestionably the best view in Seattle. I was blown away when I came up the steps and took a look at what's happening right here. Come on over this way. Come soak it in. We want to show you these charms, which you will notice are decorating the entire property here. As you said, over 6,000 of them were installed. And by hanging them, you didn't just hang them up. They actually had to be screwed in, installed, yeah, and uh, put permanent. in place. They're permanent fixtures. We designed them to be vandal proof, and we want them to last at least a generation. So they are a permanent fixture on this site, um, and it's just really fun to see them sparkle out there. Let's head out right to the waterfront view and see them. So we're going to head right over here towards the water. You're going to see where some of them are hanging. And the fun part about today is that so many of these people who ordered them, customized them, had them hung, are discovering them and finding them today for the first time. They're coming, they're looking at the grid, and they get to find where their messages are. So people want to come over and say hi. This has got to be pretty powerful to see so many messages. Some of them are named, some of them are encoded. There's secret messages. In fact, I did a story with you previewing this, talking about how they're made, where they're made. It's very neat, a company uh, just in time out in Woodenville actually makes the coins. They are a steel fabrication company. They don't really do this kind of work, but they said they wanted to do this kind of work because the great grandmother and their family worked here at the market during the Great Depression. So it's a very cool woven fabric right. that's happening here. Right. What we've noticed is everybody has a story about Pike Place Market, whether it connects back to their family and family members who've worked here, or um, just a love story about the market. A lot of people had their first dates here or some of their best memories. And so really, the Charm Fence is really a time capsule of everybody's memories here in the market. So it's really powerful. When I was here with you earlier in the week previewing, some of your volunteers said that their first date was here at the market. They come to the market uh, on a regular basis. Now they volunteer. They've already bought charms. They bought charms for their friends. They brought up a great point in that these would make a great gift to be able to commemorate someone's family. Got a funny message, corporate message, you name it. And that's a great story. Uh, we actually ran that this morning on the TV side on King 5. We're also going to be uh, showing that to folks in the 4 o'clock news on King 5. So if you're near a TV, tune in. We're going to be uh, seeing the sights and sounds here. Uh, this has been obviously a long time in the making, a lot of money in the making. Right. What does it feel like to get to this point where it's officially feeling like summer here? I mean, you couldn't have picked a better day <laughs> for this. Isn't this gorgeous? Yeah. yeah. We're really fortunate. You know, this project has literally been 40 years in the making. Yeah. So those of us who are here today who helped finish it, I mean, it's an incredible feeling, obviously, but really we look to the people who were there before us as well. It started with Victor Steinbrook and the Friends of the Market who helped save the market in the 1970s. Right around that time is when this site actually burned down. This was a market building called the Municipal Market and it caught fire. They tore it down in 1974 and the plan was always to rebuild it as part of the historic district of Pike Place Market and it was just an expensive site to build on. We've got the Burlington Northern Rail Tunnel right below us, wow. and we've got the viaduct right here. So it just did not become an ideal location to develop until the plans to bring the viaduct down and open up downtown Seattle to our waterfront. And so when that idea was first in formulation, they looked to this site 
as a great first piece of that puzzle yeah. um, because we want to connect Pike Place Market to the waterfront. That's one of the top questions we get here in the market. Where's the gum wall? Right. Where's the original Starbucks? And how do I get down to the waterfront? Sure. Well, directing people on the stairs or the elevators or the combination of those that you have to take, it's quite a journey. Right. Um, but in the, in the future, we look forward to literally having a park-like connection to the market front that will take you seamlessly right down to the water. For people who grew up in Seattle like I did, or they moved here and this is home now, and you want to be a part of it, I think it's such a unique opportunity to be able to go online. The cost is about 180 bucks. Right. You get to customize your message. It's made. It will be hung. You just finished installation for this round, but you're going to be doing it again in the fall. So if you would love to have your family, your company here, a part of the market forever, or as long as forever is, this is a great opportunity. Jump online, reserve yours. They're going to be uh, hanging some more in the fall. And as I walked around, I saw some really great messages, not only tributes, messages of love and inspiration, but even some secret. I saw some Pearl Jam lyrics. I don't want to give away too much, but we're, we're within striking distance of a couple of proposals. A couple of Will You Marry Me's are right over here. And again, those people, maybe they're going to be here today. We might watch something unfold right in front of us. Uh, we're inside of 10 minutes here before we're going to kick off things uh, with the mayor on the stage here. So we want to go downstairs real yeah. quick, because yes, there is a downstairs that we want to show you guys, much of which is still under construction. We know a lot of you are taking advantage of the sunshine. You want to get out, you want to do some gardening. There's a beer garden downstairs. They just put that in. So come on downstairs. A lot of folks on Facebook asking some messages, including about the pig. It is here. Billy is right over there. That was the one it was located blocks away, airlifted. So come by and see Billy. That's not the one that's out in front of Pike Place. She's still there. Don't worry. You guys should see my mom's charm. It's really good. She's got her mom's charm up here. See people coming to find your charm. Where's your mom's charm? I'll show you. It's right up here on number 75. It's got a beautiful view, and it's right above all the art. How did, when did you decide to, to do this for mom? Well, I saw something about the market uh, doing. I wanted to be a part of Seattle's growing market front because we always have came here yeah. and I decided to go ahead and do it and it looks beautiful it's a perfect spot it says we love you mom show it to us we're gonna walk by here we're gonna show it to us special tribute and again a great example of a way that you can sit here and be a part of the market forever there's your mom right here Maureen Cantrell see it is it's a beautiful thing and it will be here forever yeah. so we love it so love it's it. awesome well, thank you. Thanks for sharing with us. Maureen will be hanging right there. We love it. You guys want to take advantage of it. You really should do that. And I know this art is special, too. Yeah, so um, we did a public art process, and this is uh, one of two giant public art projects we have on the site. These are mosaic tiles handcrafted by Claire Dona, and she was a market artist for 19 years here in the market, and now she's got a studio in Vashon, and she does these giant mosaic installations in parks and community centers, and we are lucky that she got to build what's called Northwest Microcosm here on the market front. Yeah. So there's actually three panels. It represents the bounty of the market. This one is the fruits and the vegetables, and we'll go down one level to check out the flower wall. Yeah. We've got about five minutes until they kick things off on the main stage. We're going to stream that for you live as well, so don't go anywhere. We will have that for you. All of this. I mean, look at this staircase. Staircase to heaven. Look at this. Look at this view. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, this right here, these vats, that's foreshadowing. <laughs> there is a brewery. It's coming in right downstairs. Chris? Well, I told him this is a lot of people see the sunshine. They think about gardening. I think about beer gardens. So it's similar thinking with a different twist. Here's where folks are getting uh, some of their pins. They've got some of the charms over here. So folks coming down here, getting a chance to, uh, to actually be a part of it. You can get your charms or hoof prints at these pike up booths. This eventually will become the brewery, right? Most of it, as you can see behind the glass here, still under construction. Yeah, so this is the new home of Old Stove Brewing. People might be familiar with their first location, which is on First Avenue in Pine in the market right now. That location will close after they finish building this one out. This will be a full production brewery and canning facility, as well as a huge restaurant and brewery. So um, what they've built right now is just a tasting room for today's event. Yes. And behind those glass walls, you can see uh, what's to come is the brewery that they're building out. 
those grain silos we saw outside, that's literally uh, where they're going to be pumping some of their, their mash from. And we know from the last year that Seattle has kind of skyrocketed up the beer food chain. Seattle is now uh, boasts the most breweries of any city. Uh, these guys are going to do not only uh, 20 locally made beers that they make, and they're going to rotate on tap, but they also got some great food that's going to be all locally sourced. So it's very Seattle what's happening right here. It is still under construction, but they are uh, opening it up just so people can come by and have a taste here. Let's keep going back this way. Are you hungry? Of course. This smells. You guys are lucky you can't smell what's happening here. Well, you came to the right place, so we're heading to Honest Biscuit. If you're really hungry, what you need to get is the Beecher's Biscuit with Uli's sausages and an egg on top. Would you quit it already? <laughs> Doesn't that sound great? Oh, my goodness. So these guys actually just opened up today, Honest Biscuits, right here. What a cool opportunity to come down, grab a bite to eat with the best view of Seattle right out the window. This is it. Yep, so they're hand baking um, and making their biscuits right here. You might remember Honest Biscuits has been in the atrium um, just over by Tenzing Momo and on the backside of De Laurentiis. Well, that again was a temporary location for them until we built out the market front. And yeah, so we're really excited to have them on board here. Now, this is the downstairs area here at market front. And again, a lot of this is still under construction. It's only going to get bigger and better here. Absolutely. So this is what we call Producers Hall. This is where all the uh, local commercial businesses uh, will be operating from. So in addition to Old Stove Brewing and Honest Biscuit, um, Indie Chocolates is moving up from the down under, mm. and they're actually doing a full uh, chocolate roasting and making uh, factory right here on the market front. Wow. So that's going to be really exciting yeah. and tantalizing. And then across the way um, is a business called Little Fish. Let's show them. Let's walk out there as we continue to make the rounds here. As you can see, the property, much bigger than you might think. If you're driving by out there and you look up and you see the tents, it is a campus now. And it's directly across from Pike Place. So even more incentive to come on down, be a local tourist. So this will be ultimately an entrance into the brewery. And as you can see, they're fully under construction right now. We've got even hard hats in there. They look the part. <laughs> they look the part. It's the real deal, people. We're actually going to be doing another little uh, preview with Chris, one of the uh, co-founders, come up in the 4 o'clock news on King 5. So if you're by TV, check that out as well. We're also going to show you that story on the charms and how they're made. We'll show you all of that. Take a look over here in yet another space. Little Fish is going to be a great restaurant also under construction. Yeah, so if you've been to Jar Bar on Western Avenue, again, that was kind of their interim location here before we built out the market front. And this is going to become a full production canning, fish canning and smoking facility, as well as a tapas bar and a little retail shopping um, for you to get your little fish. You guys are almost showing off down here at market front. I mean, this is, this is getting to be too good here. It's pretty the design is um, by the Miller Hole Partnership, a local firm in town. And a lot of people were kind of confused by the idea of how do you build something new in Pike Place Market? Being new for four years, so people aren't used to that. Well, we wanted to build to be authentic to this time period. And so we're not building to look old like the rest of the market. Much of the market was built in the 1920s wanted to use contemporary design, but you will see a lot of materials and features. Timber structures, right. um, you know, that's, that's reminiscent of the, the old timber in the rest of the market, as well as there's many different ways to travel through the market front. It's, mm -hmm. that's a, there's no one way to get there. Um, there's many nooks and crannies and fun little spaces to find. All right, we're going to move on here. And I think uh, any moment now, they're kicking things off on the main stage up there. As mentioned, the mayor's here. you got several bands, including the Dip. Love those guys. They're a lot of fun. Just wait real quick. I want to show you the public park. We're walking right back out front here. So now some of this is going to look familiar. The backside of the market up there. You've got that sky bridge there. You can cross the street down here. And all this great stuff up here. Who knew? Look at Seattle. Getting some new sparkle. We love it. Right? It's pretty amazing. Uh, literally, as I said, it's been 40 years in the making, but also 
tens of thousands of people have contributed to make this possible over time. Um, we've had over 5,000 donors to the Pike Up campaign, and that was both in Charms, Hoof Prints, as well as we're going to show you a mosaic fish wall here in a second. Wow. Um, but another way the community participated it is in this next piece of public art we're going to see here. It's 250 feet long, so it is now officially the biggest piece of public art in the market. Wow. And it's actually painted by the community. So hundreds of people participated in this this last summer when they showed up to paint these strips. And what the artist did is he jumbled them all up and um, now it's gonna become a big, big treasure hunt for those who participated to find the strips of metal that they painted. So that's what we're looking at right here across the street. All hand painted, all unique, and all those artists are gonna have to come down and find their little piece of art, right? Yeah, so it's, um, it's the creation of John Fleming. He's a local public artist. He's well known for the great blades of grass that you see outside of Seattle Center and the EMP. Um, but we'll head back in here under the grain silos and check out the fish wall before heading up to... Okay, we'll see how our signal is here as we walk underneath. Whole lot of concrete. This is built to last here. <laughs> That's right. We're going to walk by as we get ready to send it back to the main stage. They're going to kick off with the mayor and the official festivities. So this is the other wall that's part of Northwest Microcosm. And as you'll see, there's some names delicately inscribed in some of the fish. These fish represent over $5 million in donations to the Pike Up campaign to help complete the market front. So these are some of our biggest supporters. <laughs> and people just love it. I mean, look at this color. Um, each fish is unique. She handmade every single tile. They're all original. It took her three years, and she made over 4,000 of these. Wowee. So just about every nook and cranny's got something special here at Market Front. You can actually see her name on the treasure chest there. It's Claire Donab. She's the artist who, who dedicated the last three years of her life to this. I got to say, between this and the Market Charms, I love kind of the Easter egg hunt that you've created here. So many things to look and see. You could really spend time looking at those coins, uh, looking at the charms and finding messages here in the art. There's so many things to see in one of the most scenic, great places in Seattle. Congratulations, this is very exciting. Thank you, yeah. thank you. It now I hear a drum roll happening upstairs. Let's keep walking this way. I think we're getting ready to officially get things rocking and rolling on the main stage. We're gonna carry that stream for you live as well, not to worry. We're bringing you to the grand opening today. And again, if you're by a TV later on today, we're gonna to be doing the four o'clock news on King 5 right here from Market Front. You might recognize these stairs. We came down them a while ago. We just did a big circle for you. It sounds like things are officially underway I think on the main the, stage. The native blessing um, that's kicking off the, the ceremony today. Let's go check it out. Yeah, we'll come on up this way. And we'll get ready to switch over to that. You can get a bird's eye view up and over here. And we will send it over to those guys shortly. Thanks for hanging out with us here behind the scenes at Market Front. Thanks to Patricia. Come on down, check out the brand new expansion. It's open now. As you can see, summer started today officially, a day early, on my estimation. Market Front's open for business. Thanks for hanging out. We're going to send it over to the other feed, and we'll let you uh, watch the grand opening ceremonies live. See ya.
So a huge thanks to the Chief Seattle Club and their leader, Colleen Echo Hawk, who is here today and has helped many of us understand more fundamentally and deeply the importance of native, native culture here in Seattle. I want to acknowledge a number of elected officials we have here, so I'm going to list them off. Please stand and we'll give a big round of applause. Uh, from uh, the Seattle City Council, we have Councilmember Michael Bryan and Councilmember Sally Bagshaw. Councilmember Rena Gonzalez and Deputy Mayor Kate Jonskis. And of course, the Mayor, Ed Murray, right here with me on stage. From the King County Council, we have Councilmember Jim Cole Wells and King County Executive Dow Constantine. From the state, Representative Gail Tarleton. Thank you so much, Gail, for your support for this project. And former Representative Brady Walkinshaw, who helped us walk the halls in Olympia for several years to secure critical funding to make this thing real. I want to acknowledge some key project partners, Miller Hill Partnership, Selling Construction, SOJ, and Beacon. These folks really helped guide us through this project uh, and navigate what was truly improbable, right? It took us 40 years. That's because it was not easy. Like everything in the market, it was complicated and involved a lot of voices. And that's where my prepared comments end. Now, I was joking in the office yesterday that the uh, program might run a few minutes over, about 12 exactly. Uh, what I didn't tell my staff is it was going to be me taking some liberties at the beginning to do so. Now, the market is about people. It's about individuals who love this place. And that was true in this project as well. And I can't call out all the amazing folks that made this thing real, but I want to highlight just a few. Because during this process, kids were born, children graduated from high school and college, and in fact, this project even made one person go to early retirement. An amazing, amazing individual. He earned his citizenship while working on this job. Wojtek, thank you for your attention to detail. If any of you want to know which paint colors aren't quite right and which window is a little bit off, ask Wojtek. He'll be able to tell you. There's uh, two other folks I want to acknowledge, and then I'll wrap up with just two more. So Justine Kim and Carrie Holmes, two amazing women. Justine, in her own right, is a master chef. If you've never had... Korean, Japanese, Italian fusion, you are in for a treat if you go to Justine's house. And Carrie Holmes, one of the bravest and toughest women I know. If you ended up on her to-do list, watch out. <laughs> Second to last, I want to acknowledge Emily Crawford, our marketing director. Not only has she done an outstanding job with this project, she actually knows how to roll a touring kayak. Think about that for a moment. A touring kayak all the way over and back up. And then lastly, and this is just a sample, right, because it takes an amazing personal commitment to make a project like this real. I want to acknowledge Patricia Gray. She was the director of the Capital Campaign. She tuned up for this job with a stint with the Rat City Roller Girls. That's right, Slam Burger Patty. Patricia, elbows out. This thing got done. Huge 
huge hand for all those folks. So we pay close attention to history here in the market, and history is alive and well with us every single day. So it is my honor to introduce to you Joe Desimone, Jr., to share some really important comments about the Market Front Project and what it means. Thank you very much, Ben. I want to thank everybody who took the time to be here today. We very much appreciate not only what you've done today, but what you've done for the last many, many years to make this project a reality. I'd like to share with you a comment that was made by Councilman Ravel about 110 years ago when this market first opened up. He said, and I quote, this market is yours. We dedicate it to you, and may it prove to be a benefit to you, your children, and your grandchildren. It is for you to defend, to protect, and uphold. And it is for you to see that those who occupy it treat you fairly. This is one of the greatest days in the history of Seattle. And when you look out and see this view today, there's no other market in the United States that has a view like this one. But it is only a beginning, for this city will have one of the greatest markets in the world. And no matter where you go in the United States, if you say you're from Seattle, they'll ask you a couple of questions that rain all the time over there, and I remember the fish being thrown. So the market is known all over the world and all over the United States because of your efforts, time, energy, and interest. And keep in mind today that there's tens of thousands of people who couldn't be here with us today who helped make this a reality. And before you leave, it'd be great if all of you would stop by one of the vendors and purchase one item to help them keep going. Thank you very much for your time, energy, and interest to make this possible. Thank you so much, Joe. So I'm really excited about this next speaker. Not only did this individual trust the Pike Place Marketpedia with $34 million, but during his career serving in the state legislature, he brought millions of dollars in to support the social services in the market. He is a true friend of the Pike Place market. He is one of my personal idols and someone for whom I have unending respect. Please join me in welcoming our mayor, the visionary leader of our city, Mayor Ed Murray. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm humbled, and, and, and good afternoon. Before I um, say a few remarks about this incredible day and this incredible opening, let me just take a moment to talk about the recent tragedy in the city of Seattle. As you know, we as a country are struggling with the issue of race, race in our schools, racism in our foster care system, racism in our education system, and of course, the issue of police and race. And while Seattle has made progress, obviously we've not made enough progress. And once again, like other cities around the country, we face a tragedy. I want to make a commitment to you that I made to the family of Sharlina Lyles and that I made to the residents in Magnuson Park. We will have, and Chief O'Toole will make sure this happens, a thorough and independent investigation so we can learn what went wrong, we can learn how to do things better, and we can heal this community. So this is not just about the market. This is about a vision for the waterfront. And if chapter one was digging a tunnel, and chapter two is today, it is opening this incredible facility, 30,000 square feet of open public space for this new plaza. As you see, the views are breathtaking. A glass roof pavilion for 50 farmers, 12,000 square feet for artisans, a neighborhood center for expanded social services, and new affordable housing development for 40 units. 
That is a pretty incredible commitment on the part of this market, this community, this city, and your city government. So I need to thank, there's a lot of people I should thank out here. Um, but I can't because I have to thank each one of you by name. But, but I do think uh, my predecessor, Mayor Royer, is here. Are you here, Charlie? Right there. And I also should have done this in the beginning, but I want to acknowledge my husband, the first gentleman, Michael Chilzaki, who is heading over here. My uh, thanks and hats off to David Miller and his team for expanding Seattle's most recognized and loved spot. I know it was not an easy task. Thank you for the hardworking people at Pike Place PDA for your leadership and our own Seattle, City of Seattle's Office of the Waterfront for your perseverance for a future vision of what this city and our waterfront can look like. As you heard, the city made a $34 million investment in this last chapter, this latest chapter of the market. But it is also, as I said, the first or the next chapter and what we're going to do now that the tunnel is almost completed, well, Bertha's done. Now that the tunnel is almost completed, the viaduct comes down and we build a pedestrian promenade. We the overlook walk. We connect this city and knit, knit this city back to its waterfront by creating community spaces that will connect us from one end of this waterfront to the next end. And today is, is not just connecting the waterfront, it's also connecting Pike Pine as an incredible boulevard all the way up to Broadway going that direction. And next month, as another part of our waterfront vision, we will break ground in a new Pier 62 and once again have summer nights and entertainment on our waterfront. So I know Seattle loves to discuss and debate issues. And I know that we love our process. But in this case, we're done, the work has begun, and we're not gonna stop until it's completed. Again, I wanna thank everyone who made this possible. Going back, Peter, to your father, to the various my various predecessors who've kept this alive, to people who are sitting right out here who had a vision that the viaduct could come down, that we could have a world-class waterfront, and we could create one of the most iconic places in any city in America. Thank you for that vision. Let's uh, celebrate, but then let's get back to building that waterfront. Thank you. And I always joke uh, in the market every day that I have uh, hundreds of bosses. Uh, the reality is I work for 12. We have uh, many of our PDA council members. And then I ultimately work on behalf of one. So please join me in welcoming Matt Hanna, chair of the PDA council. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. What a day, huh? Today, we know the spirit of Pike Place Market is the spirit of Seattle, centered around the sky, sea, and mountains that surround us, but built as a special home for creative spirits, open minds, hard workers, and compassionate souls. That spirit is carried forward and finds new life here at the market front. Low-income housing, including for our treasured artists, businesses that make what they sell, including farm and craft products, democratic connections between the waterfront and the rest of the city, and gorgeously crafted open space for millions of visitors and residents to enjoy for years and decades to come. But we cannot look forward and contemplate all the happiness that this place will bring without first considering the history of the market that led directly to this vision of the waterfront, uh, for the market front. As many of you know, Pike Place Market was saved from the wrecking ball by the Friends of Pike Place Market, led by Victor Steinbrook and many other passionate, engaged, and I will say enlightened citizen activists. We owe them an incalculable debt of gratitude. When the market was saved, this site was specifically identified and envisioned as a future part of the Pike Place Market. The city's vision for the waterfront provided the final necessary catalyst and inspiration for us here at the Pike Place Market to realize that older vision for this site. Instead of a jagged surface parking lot, there are now hundreds of secured parking stalls 
Instead of unsafe campsites, there are now dozens of units of senior low-income housing and with some of the best views of the city. And instead of towering blackberry bushes, there are farmers selling fresh seasonal produce. Instead of a deep, craggy slope, we have gentle, accessible pathways that allow everyone to move from our bustling downtown core into and through the pavilion with artists, their local handmade crafts, and new special programs and events that'll continue to enliven this space and onward to the offerings of our new artisanal businesses and producers hall, producers hall just down below. And finally, to our spectacular, unparalleled waterfront where a century ago, produce was brought to the market by the Mosquito Fleet. We have indeed come for full circle, and today, with Market Front, we realize a vision for this site that now, today, at the beginning of its life, I don't know about you, but somehow feels and seems already as if it's been here for years. I'd like to thank the many, many de dedicated market community members who brought this to life, including numerous past and present PDA council members and executive directors and staff, including and especially Ben Franz Knight, whose devotion to Market Front became a crucial engine for its realization. <laughs> We're also exceptionally grateful to the Friends of the Market, the Market Historic Commission, the Market Foundation, our social servants agencies, donors, residents, tenants, merchants, vendors, citizens, and community members, and all those who provided input on the design of Market Front so it would serve all the market's needs and be a true reflection of all the market's values. We are one market. Standing here today, we're united in our passion and commitment, not just to what the market offers to us all, but to an ideal of community that's reflected in every part of the market. And that living ideal now has a new extended home here at the market front. Thank you all for coming today to recognize it, to celebrate it, and to commit ourselves to preserving it for generations to come. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to introduce to you my partner in crime, while uh, the PDA is the nuts and bolts, right? The Market Foundation is the heart and soul. Please join me in welcoming Market Foundation Executive Director Lillian Sherman. <laughs> as you've been hearing, the opportunity is unique. But all of the people who have participated in the Pike Up campaign can proudly now say that you made history in the Pike Place market. You built this with all of the people you've just been hearing about. We can't thank you enough for making such generous gifts to complete this long-held dream for the market in our city. More than 5,300 people, that's individuals, families, foundations, companies, have contributed more than $8.3 million towards our $9 million goal to make this happen. That's awesome. This funding supports both this expansion and the growing community of housing right behind you and the services here in the market, including the new Market Commons, which is down being showcased today on the southeast corner of the property. I invite you all to go take part of it as part of your passport today. Yes, there is still plenty of opportunity for you to be among those history makers. Uh, uh, you'll notice there's little charm booths all over my market charm. Please visit one of the Pike Up campaigns today and be a part of that number and write your name on history as well. I'd also like to thank all of the Market Foundation board members, past and present. Wave your hands. Yay! As well as the Mar Market Foundation staff. We already talked about Patricia. Thank you so much. I also want to call out Clover Thurk, who is masterful at creating celebrations like this for us. Thank you. We have some amazing sponsors to thank as well. Starbucks Coffee Company was a huge partner. Jeannie and Bruce Nordstrom, the whole Nordstrom family, the Desimone family, the True family, 
Deanne Berman, and all of the Thursday Walkers. You have, a, you have our heart, and we thank you so much for joining us. I have some grand opening sponsors, Amazon, Delta Airlines, Laird Norton Wealth Management, Bank of America, Martin Smith, and the Boeing Company. Thank you for making this possible today. <laughs> Finally, there have been a few sponsors that have been with us through this entire three-year journey, and I'd like to thank them. Urban Visions, J.P. Morgan Chase, Russell Investment, Nordstrom, Pike Brewing, PSBJ, Seattle Met, The Times, Como News 4, and Com Como News Radio. Thank you so much for staying with us. <laughs> but truly, every single gift has been important to the Market Foundation. You have helped us achieve this monumental goal and allowed us to continue this, to serve this community long into the future. You are the heart of Market, and we love you, and we want you to visit us whenever you are here. So thank you so much. And now I get to introduce Stephanie Scholl, one of my favorite vendors in the market, because she makes Pike Place pigs, which I love pigs. So Stephanie. I love pigs. You like pigs. <laughs> Hello. I am so proud and so honored to be part of this exciting day. I've been making my living as an artist here at the market for more than 11 years, and I've watched the market grow and change during each one of those years. But the change that's taken place during the last two years has been phenomenal. We have watched, we the, the market artists have watched the market front come up from the ground to meet us as we sell our handcrafted art in the Desimone Bridge. It's captured our imagination. It's captured our interest. We've been in anticipation of this day for two years. And the Marketfront Pavilion has not disappointed. This space is incredible. We love it. And, and, and judging from the public responses that I've watched, <laughs> Do I, I, yeah, I'm on fire. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna just keep going. Okay. <laughs> Judging from the public response that I've watched as we've had our little soft opening over here, you guys love it too. This space is really incredible. So on behalf of the market community, I would like to honor all of our community, past and present, who have put their hearts and souls into the market and have dedicated their time and energy into making the new pavilion and market front possible. Now, I'm going to ring a new bell, a market front bell, engraved with the year 2017 to commemorate the grand opening. We're open for business, folks. <laughs> okay, and now I have the great honor of introducing former city council member and longtime market advocate, Peter Steinbrook. Thank you. Peter. I, I think we have the market ghosts of the past, the living past with us who had decided they want to be part of this great event. This is the most exciting day I have felt in a long, long time. I can't tell you how thrilled I am, how happy I am, and how pleased I am with uh, this incredible community-wide effort. I think this says something about the Seattle process, which has gotten a bad rap over the years, but it was the Seattle process at its best that produced what you, what you see here today. The last piece of the puzzle of the renovation of the Pike Place Market, the Farmer's Market, after 47 years of a, a vision that was set when the market was created as a historic district. That's pretty amazing. And the countless people who have been involved in this is truly, truly amazing and heartwarming. It gives me faith for the future. And I want to talk about that very briefly because we got some competition here. Um, my dad wrote this little message as part of his market sketchbook. I think it was about 1969. And this was what he felt at the time when he had worked not four years but eight years 
with the Friends of the Market and a very broad coalition of market supporters to save the market. It was an eight-year battle that was part of my upbringing. But he wrote this in his book, Market Sketchbook, I believe, and it's very apropos to today's celebration. Realistic hope for the future depends upon public and private awareness, concern and civic involvement with a real commitment to human values above material considerations. It is to this commitment and the vital part it must play in building a good and livable city that we must dedicate ourselves. So with that, I'll end here on a happy note. You people are so great to be here and help celebrate and all the contributions that everyone has made. I couldn't, it couldn't be a better day in Seattle. It's going to last for generations to come. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you all for being here, and I just want to make sure you all feel okay. I have indeed gotten a high sign from our security chief shortly after the alarm went off that indeed it is a test of the alarm, although we have to go all the way through our process to get it turned off appropriately. So with that, thank you all for joining us on the grand opening day of the market front. There is indeed cold beer downstairs. Enjoy this beautiful day here in Seattle, and welcome.